April 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 33 and 34 from the Old Testament. This is the blessing Moses the man of God pronounced upon the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and revealed himself to Israel from Seir. He appeared in splendor from Mount Paran and came forth with ten thousand holy ones. With his right hand he gave a fiery law to them. Surely he loves the people, all your holy ones are in your power, and they sit at your feet, each receiving your words. Moses delivered to us a law, an inheritance for the assembly of Jacob. The Lord was king over Jeshurun. When the leaders of the people assembled, the tribes of Israel together, may Reuben live and not die, and may his people multiply. And this is the blessing to Judah. He said, Listen, O Lord, to Judah's voice, and bring him to his people. May his power be great, and may you help him against his foes. Of Levi, he said, Your Thummim and Urim belong to your godly one, whose authority you challenged at Massa, and with whom you argued at the waters of Meribah. He said to his father and mother, I have not seen him, and he did not acknowledge his own brothers, or know his own children, for they kept your word, and guarded your covenant. They will teach Jacob your ordinances, and Israel your law. They will offer incense as a pleasant odor, and a whole offering on your altar. Bless, O Lord, his goods, and be pleased with his efforts. Undercut the legs of any who attack him, and of those who hate him, so that they cannot stand. Of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord will live safely by him. He protects him all the time, and the Lord places him on his chest. Of Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless his land with the harvest produced by the sky, by the dew, and by the depths crouching beneath. With the harvest produced by the daylight and by the moonlight, with the best of the ancient mountains, and the harvest produced by the age-old hills. With the harvest of the earth and its fullness, and the pleasure of him who resided in the burning bush, May blessing rest on Joseph's head and on the top of the head of the one who set apart from his brothers. May the firstborn of his bull bring him honor, and may his horns be those of a wild ox. With them may he gore all peoples, all the far reaches of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, when you go outside, and Issachar, when you are in your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain. There they will sacrifice proper sacrifices, for they will enjoy the abundance of the seas and the hidden treasures of the shores. Of Gad he said, Blessed be the one who enlarges Gad. Like a lioness he will dwell. He will tear at an arm, indeed a scalp. He has selected the best part for himself, for the portion of the ruler is set aside there. He came with the leaders of the people. He obeyed the righteous laws of the Lord and his ordinances with Israel. Of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub. He will leap forth from Bashan. Of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, overflowing with favor, and full of the Lord's blessing, possess the west and south. Of Asher, he said, Asher is blessed with children. May he be favored by his brothers, and may he dip his foot in olive oil. The bars of your gates will be made of iron and bronze, and may you have lifelong strength. There is no one like God, O Jeshurun, who rides through the sky to help you on the clouds in majesty. The everlasting God is a refuge, and underneath you are his eternal arms. He has driven out enemies before you and has said, Destroy! Israel lives in safety. The fountain of Jacob is quite secure in a land of grain and new wine. Indeed, its heavens rain down dew. You have joy, Israel, who is like you. You are a people delivered by the Lord. Your protective shield and your exalted sword, may your enemies cringe before you, may you trample on their backs. Then Moses ascended from the deserts of Moab to Mount Nebo to the summit of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. The Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead to Dan, and all of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the distant sea. 
the Negev, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of the date palm trees, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it, but you will not cross over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in the land of Moab near Beth Peor. But no one knows his exact burial place to this very day. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died, but his eye was not dull nor had his vitality departed. The Israelites mourned for Moses in the deserts of Moab for thirty days. Then the days of mourning for Moses ended. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had placed his hands on him, and the Israelites listened to him and did just what the Lord had commanded Moses. No prophet ever again arose in Israel like Moses, who knew the Lord face to face. He did all the signs and wonders the Lord had sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, all his servants, and the whole land. And he displayed great power and an awesome might in the view of all Israel. God, I'm going to miss Moses. <laughs> I'm going to miss his trepidation and fear when he first started out and said, I can't do this. Why are you asking me? Basically because we relate so well with him at that point. And then as he gets stronger and stronger in his faith and his relationship and his trust, in you and what you can do for not only him glorifying you but for also the people of Israel can't even imagine some of the amazing things Moses must have seen his heart must have been broken a lot too and even though I've read this story a lot about Moses and turning over authority to to Joshua and I love the stories of Joshua I'm so excited for those to, to come up next I, I kind of missed a few words there that this was the first time I'd really paid that much attention um, that you had buried Moses and I think about when Jesus was here on earth and how he he wept for people and how his heart broke for people and how your heart must have broke for Moses at that time. He was leaving the leadership of Israel. You had to take him out of there because he wasn't obedient to you. But you actually buried Moses yourself. I don't presume to know what God thinks or doesn't think. I wonder if it was hard for you to bury him. Or if you knew eventually you would get to see him in heaven and it was okay. I don't know. All I know is those words caught my eye and they hadn't before when I had read them. God, I pray that you hold me to these same standards. It's almost a little bit scary saying that, knowing what happened with Moses. But you have shown me so many things. I, just like Israel, have seen your miracles, I've seen your consistency, I've seen your love, I've seen your grace, I've seen your mercy, I've seen your forgiveness, I've seen you work in so many people's lives that how in the world can I go further left or right than just dead center into what it is that you want me to be and who you want me to, to be in this world and how you want me to get there? How could I choose anything different after seeing all the wonders and signs that you have shown me in my entire life? There are so many days like today that my humanness just drives me crazy. I wish sometimes that whatever happened in, in Eden never had to have happened and we could just be walking along with you all the time, God. I don't know, it's just frustrating. But help me see what it is that I'm missing. Help me grow stronger in you. Help me glorify you even more tomorrow and throughout the rest of my life. I just feel like there's so much more I could be doing for you. And yet my choice of God's just distracts me and, and creates a filter in front of me that I can't see. God, 
take those away from me. Show them to me so that I can remove them. Whatever needs to happen so I can do more for your kingdom. That is what I ask. Moses, till the very last moment, did as much as he possibly could for your kingdom, for Israel at that time. God, I just want that so much. I love you so much. And I want that for all your people. In your son's name I pray. Amen.